Hello everyone. So this video is going to be regarding abdominal TB, a condition which is now rare in Caucasians but is found in developing world and in AIDS patient. It is acquired via gut infection which can occur rarely now via the bovine TB that is by drinking the raw milk or it can occur by swelling own sputum okay a sputum which is mycobacterium tuberculosis reaches the gut. The affected area most commonly is ileocecal region. You can see in this image uh, we have mesenteric lymph nodes that are enlarged and rubbery. On the right corner we can see magnified areas showing the ileocecal region with a stricture that is ring stricture we have present. We also have transverse ulcer in the patient of TB uh, compared to a patient of these ulcers you can see in this image too. Whereas when you see a patient of typhoid because of involvement of pear pitches, we see longitudinal ulcer. Going further, uh, sign and symptom in abdominal TB can be systemic manifestation. These systemic manifestation are that of TB means there will be fever, there will be night sweat, there will be weight loss, there will be malaise and there will be lethargy. Patient, patient will be lethargic. System specific manifestation depend on the involvement. Most commonly though we studied the ileocecal junction is involved. There can be involvement of peritoneum, hepatobiliary region and what not. Anything in the GIT can be involved. After studying we will study system specific manifestation if GI is involved. Means a patient of abdominal TB how he is going to present. So, a patient of abdominal TV has distended abdomen or there can be localized swelling. This localized swelling is most commonly found in the left lower quadrant because ileocecal region is worst, what is most commonly involved. Along with distension of abdomen, patient can have nausea, vomiting along with pain abdomen. Okay. There will be changing bowel habits means sometime diarrhea, sometime constipation or the frequency of bowel movement in changed. Since abdominal TB and Crohn's disease have very much similar findings uh, in radiology and histology along with their symptoms. So we need to differentiate it. So we will discuss here some of the points which differentiate abdominal TB and Crohn's disease. Abdominal TB has abdominal pain and Crohn's disease has abdominal pain. Abdominal pain in the case of abdominal TB is amazing may be acute or may be from months. Diarrhea is more predominant finding in the case of Crohn's disease. A fever in case of Crohn's disease has no pattern whereas fever in abdominal TB will show low grade fever and evening rise of temperature. Similarly, Crohn's disease and abdominal TB can both involve any part of GIT and peritoneal disease can be in sorry perianal disease can occur in both TB abdominal TB as well as Crohn's disease. Peritoneal TB in case of abdominal TB can result in peritonitis that will lead to an exudative ascites. Whereas in case of Crohn's disease, the ascites is uncommon, very uncommon and if present can lead to a transudate ascites. Abdominal TB when involving the hepatobiliary region can lead to granulomatous hepatitis. We also need to understand along with systemic manifestation, system specific manifestation, some of the manifestation that can occur from a particular region. So these are some of them. So site specific gastric symptom depends on the area involved. The most common three areas are peritoneal, intestinal and hepatic area. Peritoneal disease on per abdominal examination, doughy abdomen is felt as well as ascites is present which has exudative fluid as already discussed. Intestinal disease present with an altered bowel habit which is diarrhea and constipation along with which sometimes a minor perrectal bleed may be present. In case of hepatic disease right upper quadrant pain as well as rarely right upper quadrant swelling may be present whereas jaundice, ascites, hepatosplenomegaly are rare finding. So now after understanding all this we need to go into the management part. Investigations involve all the routine investigations which are done okay and the findings can be increased ESR, uh, increased serum alkaline phosphatase if hepatic involvement is there. Histological confirmation is needed and this histological confirmation can be done by taking the biopsy and this can be done by endoscopy or laparoscopy.
Caseation of granuloma is not always see present. Okay, this is an important point. A culture may take time up to six weeks. So a PCR technique is preferred for the biopsy specimen, which will give a result the fast. Treatment involves the chemotherapy with anti-tubercular anti-tubercular drugs that is isoniazid, pyrazinamide, ethambutol, and the rifampicin. Let's talk now about the surgical indications and surgery that are done in case of abdominal TB. 